Welcome to the very first episode of the Animal Liberation Hour, where we seek insight from animal rights and liberation activists around the world so that we can think, reflect, learn, and be inspired. My name is Trey Morrow, and for this episode, I sat down with an old friend, Yuri, and we discussed all kinds of things. Uh, He's a longtime animal rights activist, so he's got a lot of experience for us all to learn from, and I cannot wait for you to hear what all he had to say and all the wisdom that he gave. Uh, But before we get into the episode, I want to remind you that the Animal Liberation Hour is a project of animal activism mentorship. AAM is a free multinational program that helps aspiring animal rights activists as well as those who are already activists but want to take their activism to the next level. From one-on-one mentorship to free workshops and trainings to this podcast, AAM seeks to empower humans to fight for animals so that the world will have more activists and we can achieve liberation sooner. For more information, visit AnimalActivismMentorship.com and follow AAM on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Animal Activism Mentorship. You can keep up with the Animal Liberation Hour on AAM social media as well. Well, without further ado, our first episode of the Animal Liberation Hour. I hope you are as inspired by Yuri as I am and continue to be. Enjoy. So yeah, welcome Yuri. You're the first guest ever on the podcast. So this is awesome, man. Thanks for being here. Oh, that's amazing. I'm 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 so honored. Yeah, it, it, this was really uh this was a real gift to be uh, invited and uh and I'm happy here to do this. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for uh thinking of me and 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 sending the invite, man. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm curious to know, I know you've done some activism uh, before you even got into animal rights, so I'd like to hear some about that. I just want you to introduce yourself and just kind of tell us your origin story into activism in general and then how you became involved in animal rights. Yeah, sure. They, um, it's it's it, it was a little bit of a messy route, so I kind of tell it a little different, I guess, what, it, almost every time I'm asked in a way, but... Um, it, it it really like there was a few influences that I really like think that that uh, sent me uh, you know to kind of like care about these things and like finally find my way to getting active. But um, yeah, I uh, it was a long time in the making. I think like the earliest kind of thing I remember that ever having like any kind of like inkling that like that these things were happening to animals and these things were happening to the you know in the, the planet the way things are, were going. Um, was from my was from my grandmother Inez who uh who actually like way back um just to be like dating myself here back when I was a little kid in the 1980 when Ingrid Newkirk started PETA and um the same the same year they, they were they were um protesting the the National Institutes of Health they took over the the main office building there and um made national news attention with that and um the same year too was the first time that Paul Watson had left Greenpeace and um, was making news, uh, crashing his first boat into like whaling ships out in the Atlantic and um, doing just this really, such brave, incredible work. And somehow my grandmother got wind of this and was one of the first donors to like both of these groups um, way back, like right from the beginning. And so for being a little kid uh, visiting her in the summers, we, we, uh, I would see this big stack of envelopes on our kitchen table and had all this, like this shelter, that shelter, Greenpeace, Sea Shepherd, PETA. And you know, my, both of my grandparents were working folks. So I know they, they weren't just like throwing money at, you know, the, the, the groups here is something they really cared about. So that kind of caught my attention way, way back. And, um, it, it took a long time, it, like, uh, traveling so much and, um, being overseas, I didn't really see like, uh, see that all the time so it's just kind of like a little germ a little seed that i remember that was um started back then and um it wasn't until like so it was like 1980 81 uh, in high school and uh college i was not really doing too much 
But uh, after getting out of school, it just kind of dawned on me that like, you know, what am I here for? You know, like <laughs> you got you to gotta have some kind of purpose, you know, like this is like, you know, you're lucky to be here. And um, if you're not making the world a better place, then why are you here? You know, that's just kind of what I felt like. And I wasn't doing anything at that time. So um, I just from probably, you know, from my grandma's influence, I, I found groups and I started looking up things from Greenpeace and um, I was like subscribing to like Earth First Journal and um, seeing a lot of like um, independent work that was happening as well as like what these big groups were doing. And it just kind of gravitated. <clears throat> it just kind of pulled me in. It was like gravity. I just like it, it, something called to me from it and I started getting active like first off uh, doing environmental work um, and, and mostly just kind of independent because the groups like actually for where, where you are right now, I was at, at that time after college, I had moved back to the States and was living in Columbia and um, there wasn't a whole lot going on there in South Carolina. So I started just doing things on my own and, um, do, you know, taking part with the bigger groups when I could, but really slowly, just kind of like doing a little bit at a time, um, a little bit, you know, <laughs> environmental activism for me at that time was like uh, tree spiking and pulling up like a... Um, uh, you know, construction, uh, survey poles and everything, <laughs> like any kind of like little, like, uh, disruptive little things that I could find to do. Cause that's all I knew how to, you know, it's the only thing I saw around me that I could actually take part in, but yeah. So paying attention, I ended up finally getting involved with, um, Greenpeace on a, a as like a, a volunteer coordinator for them and moved back to, I moved down to Florida at that time. And, um, just started doing events regularly with the other friends that I met down there. Um, so yeah, it really started that way for me with uh, environmentalism. But um, I think what would really drew me to become an animal activist was um, just that I had this really like strong sense of justice, I feel like. Because uh, before, before becoming uh, aware and becoming vegan and everything. I was really active, uh, involved in anti-war marches and things like that also at the time. And all of this kind of the only, the, the real central thing that they all sort of involve is like injustice. And that kind of like, it, it really bothered me to see these things going on around me and not doing anything about it. It just, it, it didn't sit well with me. So that's, that's kind of just what keeps me, uh, going back out there and getting active. And, um, Eventually, thankfully, veganism dawned on me from like a few different directions <laughs> um, after way too long. But, you know, that's what we all say. You know, it's like we wish we went vegan sooner. But, um, yeah, so it, the – do you, you want me to the, – the influences as far as the vegans when that started? Do you want me to keep going with that? Sure, sure yeah. The um, – so, it, it, yeah, like I said, it was kind of a few different directions. Um, I – it's like, I gotta say, like, I've like the most like uh, inspiration, you know, and it, it just blown away by people that see these things and change immediately. Like for me, that blows my mind. And like, I, I, I wish I, I had been able to do that. But um, the diff the way the different things worked, I mean, when I first became aware of it and like how important I knew it was, but not being able to act on it at first is like kind of like, um, if you're somebody that doesn't know how to do these things, it was like somebody saying like, this is really important, you know, like you gotta do this. And then they hand you like a Rubik's cube and you're like, what do I do with this? You know? <laughs> how do I get, how do I, how do I make this work? How do I fix this? And you have, if you're not, you know, if you're not, you know, good with, you know, figuring those things out, it's like, how, you know, you just don't know. And so like, that's kind of was the situation I felt like I was in. So I had to kind of like try to, little by little piece things together. I have, I was really lucky at the time having a partner that was a uh, vegetarian from an early age at that time. And, um, even though I wasn't able to commit to it at the time, I do remember that I wouldn't eat any animal products in the house when we were living together. So I went as far as that. So that probably, that reduced a lot, how many animals I was eating, um, and all that, but it wasn't until I started researching more and um, coming across things like um, the ALF and like animal liberators and like finding those the information about that online that really put a fire under me because I was still sitting there like not being able to like 
choose veggie burgers, you know, over like real animals. And like these people are out there like risking their lives, you know, their, their freedom. And it just kind of made me feel like I was like just silly for not acting stronger. And so like that really like helped, you know, influence me. Um, and thanks to, yeah, thanks to my partner too. I ended up seeing this like documentary from like, maybe I think it was from 2007 called Peaceable Kingdom, which was a, uh, a documentary about a uh, farm sanctuary and a lot of the supporters that they have, which a lot of them that were interviewed in there were former industry people, you know, it's like former cattlemen and, and uh, animal farmers and just telling in a really personal, direct way, like what got them to change. And that really spoke to me, like really heavy. Um, I remember going into like a McDonald's or something the week after that and like looking up at the, the numbers on the screen there and my stomach just like, just clenched. It just was like, no, you know, it was like so clear. Um, and so I think pretty soon after that, it was like a new year's thing. I, I th I'm pretty sure I gave up meat at that point. Um, it was still tough. It was like my favorite like thing was like, it, veganism wasn't too hard for me. Like becoming vegetarian in the first place was more the struggle. Um, and like back still before that, I was going to every year for my birthday to Outback. <laughs> and, um, that was a family thing. My family would take me and everything. And, uh, I remember I gave them up though, because of the, the war, uh, issues that I was like focused on. They, um, were one of the main donors to the, to the parties that were supporting the war. And so I chose to boycott them then. And that kind of like also taught me that you are capable of changing and, making a difference, you know, in your own way. So finally done to be that, that, yeah, that would have been sort of like 2008 and, um, showing up at the animal rights conference, uh, a little bit after that, like this, uh, that summer kind of sealed the deal, just like being in a conference hall with like 700, 800 other vegans. It just became so simple as like a light switch that I, you know, I was like, this is my tribe. And, um, you know, I found you finally, <laughs> <laughs> yes, finding your tribe is so important. I stress that to people all the time because it can you can really feel alone sometimes as a vegan and especially as an animal rights activist, you know, your friends, your family, they may not understand why you're so dedicated to this. Some people just don't get it. So surrounding yourself with people who, you know, hold those same ideals and are willing to put themselves on the line, you know, for that cause or I feel like that's so important. Um yeah, I, I took so much from what you've just said already. Um, so you were talking in the beginning about, you know, kind of finding your, your purpose, like, what am I here for, you know? And that resonates with me so much because, you know, there have been times in my life when I was younger where I was um, – focused on myself, you know, focused on my own interests, uh, focused on, you know, my career, uh, above all. And, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, like having interests outside of things that are beyond yourself. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with doing things that you enjoy and, you know, things like that. But talk a little bit about that because I, I've, I've come to find, uh, throughout my years that, you know, there are just so few people like that. It feels like the ones who you do meet that are like that are amazing. Um, but yeah, I think sometimes people just get stuck in the rut of everyday life, what they feel like they're supposed to do, what they feel like, um, makes them successful or, uh, are perceived as successful, those type of things. Can you talk a little bit just about finding, your purpose and just how, how you did that. And, uh, maybe what you would say to anyone else who's trying to find theirs, whether it be animal rights or, or some other issue, anti-war or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it's, it's not a simple thing just as much as like you would think, you know, it, it, it is like a process for everybody. And it's like a, a transition, a transformation that everyone needs to go through. You know, and um, it, it it really it, it's hard to say exactly where it came from because I do feel like part of it was in in me, like just dormant maybe. Um, like I like I was talking about my grandmother. I credit you know her like a, a, at least pointing that in a kind of direction that 
that I picked up later. But um, what really helped me a lot, um, I mean, is this self-motivation, of course, you know, I mean, like, when you know you should be doing things, it's, um, it's tough to look in the mirror some days when you're like passing up opportunities and just living your life, not influencing things in a good way too much. So that's kind of like, you know, like um, a personal uh, a thing that I felt. But the, the main thing, really, to be honest, they, uh, was these amazing uh, examples that are just everywhere out there of people that that um, are activated in their lives and are like, you know, picked up the ball and ran and are like, you know, so far ahead now that they're just like doing things like constantly and, um, you know, like like I was saying, becoming aware really early on of like uh, Ingrid Newkirk, um, Paul Watson, especially where these these folks that they're they're really showing us the way, you know, like, I mean, like what a really a meaningful life is like made up of is like action, you know, is like, um, it, you know, doing selfless things to try to, to make things better and to create change and to help others. And, and like these people really like, were like a, just a, you know, a, a spotlight for me. I mean, that really like, um, they were, they were just like, this is the path. And, and, and really inspired me to like, you know, like it really like put the fire under me, like to get active and to find a way to, to, to help and work with others. And, um, you know, with, when I was doing community stuff with Greenpeace, like teaming up with other people and doing it. Um, and then really like, I'm really thankful that year when I went to that conference in 2008, finding vegan outreach, because that really like was where it showed me that an individual can really do a lot of things just on their own that has like a massive influence that, that really like was the, the moment. So, but it was really these other influences that brought me there to meet them in the first place. You know, it was these other heroes that like I looked up to all, you know, and I just grew more and more uh, wanting to be like them over the years. Yeah. I'll, so I, I find that really interesting because yeah, I definitely had some role models when I first went vegan. There were some activists that I were watch, that I was watching on YouTube and and stuff like that, and they they really kind of um, helped me uh, with just the knowledge part of it, and also you know it it kind of gave me that fire. I mean, the animals obviously were the inspiration behind that fire that I got to want to be an activist. But, you know, seeing other people in action doing it um, was was huge. But at the same time, I felt this uh, disconnect because these were people on YouTube, some in other countries. And I thought, well, where do I fit into all of this? Um, I was doing some activism online and, and stuff like that, but I wanted to get into the streets. And it was actually you, Yuri um, who helped me get into the streets, um, because you were this, I mean, those are real people too, but you were like this real tangible person and you were, act, you know, that I could see face to face and, you know, you, you helped me get involved and, uh, that's all, that's all it took. I just needed that little handhold to the, to the first thing. And then I was able to, um, do a lot more. Um, and, and I felt empowered to do a lot more. So can you, can you just talk about um, the importance of someone realizing that they can make a change? Because I think that was my issue. I didn't realize what I was capable of. Um, I just thought, you know, and I think a lot of people are in this mindset. Well, just let those people are so brave. Let them handle it. Um, what can I do, you know, compared to them? They're already doing so great. Um it's easy to fall into that kind of a mindset. Can can you just talk about yeah the importance of finding that within yourself uh, to make a difference? Yeah, yeah. It, it um it still amazes me that that we had that that uh that time that we we were able to when we first met. Yeah, right. You know, it just like and and especially that school in itself is just like even more amazing to me that that's where that happened where we met for the first time and um um with our friend yuki uh who was traveling with me uh, doing the, the colleges for vegan outreach at the time um we uh yeah we remember too like wasn't that day like the weather was just horrible i think so 
I saw I, I, in the picture we all have rain jackets on, so I think so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah, you do. You know, it just didn't seem like it was going to be add up to too much that day. But we really, you know, the three of us really turned it on. Like, um, and and the exact number I don't remember, but just like we spreading veganism with the leaflets, we we uh, we got over three thousand students informed for the animals that day, and. Um, you know, for a big ag school like that, that's like, that's like a huge, uh, influence. Um, it really, you know, you see it when you, when, when, when it happens, like the rest of the day, like on campus, if you're walking around, you'll hear conversation after conversation about like this thing that happened that day there. So it's, it's, it, uh, it was, it was really huge. You know, that was a really great day. And, uh, I had, I had no idea of, uh, the, the importance of it either for like you going forward and like, you know, what you've accomplished like uh with AAM so it's even more amazing that way um but uh, you know yeah so in a way i guess i mean for people that see these you know these these really amazing people out there like doing so much i mean for me it was like i just had to be one you know i had to like try to be you know like like them in in my own way and like try to get active and to like to, to be part of the difference, you know, make you actually, the world will be better because you're here and not because, you know, and not just like another human, um, you know, wasting air, you know, whatever. Um, and yeah, it, it, for, for in the beginning, you know, you, it, there's a lot of inertia, you know, and you're kind of like very comfortable and like you're, you know, not totally comfortable because you still feel that, you know, that, that pull that you, you know, that this important thing that you need to, to do, but, um, the only, the way that I guess that, that I started for me that really worked was, um, was, was joining up with others, uh, finding, you know, others, uh, that were working on the same thing and felt the same way about, uh, how important this work is and, and, uh, you know, what we, we all need to be doing. Um, that really helped a lot. And it, it also showed me, like you said, that like these real, flesh and bone people that you meet that, you know, you get to know them. They're, they're just another person just like you, but they're doing this amazing work. That's really powerful. You know, it, 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 that's what showing up at that conference in 2008, the national animal rights conference, it will kind of did for me. You not only had like all these people like Paul Watson there, like it was like a superhero conference in a way, like all the people you got to meet and talk to, but all these other people that were there that were vegan and learning were way ahead of me. And like, I just was like, I just picked up on that energy and like followed them. But going back to Florida, I still had to work out, you know, how to, to get active. And I did a lot working with other folks on the, for the environment. That's what I was saying. Like when I met other people that were doing uh, similar work, but uh, knowing at that point that I had to focus more on animals, it was something I had to kind of start on my own. Um, and it was a very small, you know, it's kind of, I think it is a smart way maybe to approach it because it's very like applicable. It's like you start small, you know, and you just like commit yourself like, okay, you know, I, you know, give, I'm going to give the animals like one or two hours this week, you know, and then I'm going to commit that. Like, I'm going to, that's going to be, that's going to be my thing this week. And I'm going to get it done. And you go and you do it, you know, and you, you know, you see that, it feels good to be like active for once. That feels amazing. I mean, like, especially if you, if you do meet anybody that is positively influenced on the spot for you, you know, you being there, whether you're at a protest and somebody's like, you know, like honking their horn, like, yeah, you know, good at, you know, or like if you're leafleting like I was and, um, somebody like immediately like turns around after they walk 10 steps away and comes back and like says, thank you. You know, like this is like really important stuff. And like, I've been thinking about this actually. So like, I, I just want to say thank you for being out here. That's, that feels really amazing, you know? Um, and so, you know, just starting just like with that little commitment, you really, I think pretty quickly can like scale it up little by little and, you know, pretty soon, you know, you're doing, um, you're doing four hours a week, you're doing eight hours a week, you're doing more than one day a week. And, um, you know, it snowballs on you kind of, <laughs> you get to this place where you're like every waking moment, like, like, uh, you, you could, you could actually like jump in and take part in something, or you could do your own, you know, activism when you learn enough and like the different actions you can take 
just right out of bed almost, you know? Um, that's the way I feel now. I mean, like, just like I can get out of bed, I can hop on the bus and I can head down to YSL or wherever. And like Jose hands me a megaphone and I'm like ready to go. You know, it's like, doesn't take any effort or anything like after a certain point. So I guess that's what I would just say, you know, like just uh, to commit yourself to what you can get out and do right now. And um, if you do have others that are in your area doing it, you know, like message them, you know, get out there. They, they want your help. You know, they, they'll be stoked to hear from you. And um, like it, it'd be an amazing thing, like almost every time. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. There's always organizers looking for more people. So so find your uh, local folks. Um, yeah, we, we were talking a little bit about, uh, um, that day that, uh, you know, we did activism together and that was my first, uh, street activism. And yeah, I mean, something when we were doing activism in Chicago together recently, there were, and this isn't the first time this has happened where while we are doing actions, people who did not know about the protest will come across us and join because they agree with the message. And sometimes those people have never protested before, but they're doing it in this moment while people are there. And I have to imagine that, um, I mean, it's a powerful experience for me to witness, but until I had been involved in activism, I don't think I had ever just like happened upon activism like street activism except for maybe like some campaigning for a candidate or, or, or something like that is probably the most but not really for like a cause um especially not animal rights um but but yeah i mean i just i just think that's great i mean you don't know the kind of influence you have just on other people who are either you know new activists or people who have been activists but Need, need a new fire under their butt or, you know, who, whoever these people are that come up and join, or maybe they don't join in that moment, but they see it and get inspired uh, to do that. And it's just like, you know, you that day that we met, you didn't know, you probably didn't know in the moment how much of an impact that was going to have on me, just like we don't know the kind of impact that our activism is going to have on other people taking action, which goes further for the animals. So yeah, I just wanted to make that little point because, uh, yeah, I just yeah. thought yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's so important you don't think about. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's, it, it, it's one thing like you don't always think about, but you know, you, you might think the influence that you're having, but when you inspire others just by your actions, you don't always hear about it. Like sometimes thankfully you do. And like, you know, that's amazing moment, you know, when, the, when you realize it, but uh, probably most of the time you don't, you know, and like when you're when you're influencing somebody like that, that's to me, it, it's um, I really love that because it's like you're mag you're multiplying your own impact, you know, that you're having by your actions that you're taking. And um, it's it's like a it, like it's almost like a virus, but like a good virus, like, <laughs> like it's contagious, you know I mean? Like, and you see that when you're at the demo and people are walking up and didn't know that was happening. And, you know, you could see their faces, they're recording on their phone and like, you know, stopping what they're doing that day to, to give you like a fist in the air, like, you know, way to go. And, um, it, it just, to me, that's one thing I really think is like important to, to remember. I mean, you, by getting active and by getting out there, it isn't just your own influence. It's like you really are, I mean, it, you really are like, you know, taking part in like changing everything because like you're, you're bringing more people in to like get active along with you while you do that. And that's like eventually that's how we win, you know? Yeah, exactly. That is how we win. And it's, it's what uh, another mentor of mine calls the power of being out there. Uh, when you put yourself out there and do activism, you don't you don't know uh, what kind of positive impact that you're going to have that day. And it may not be in the way that you expect, but by just taking that step of getting out there and trying to make a positive change, um, yeah, things, things happen. Nothing's going to happen if you take no action but if you take some kind of action uh sometimes things become opportunistic in the moment uh and yeah i mean you gotta you gotta get out there right um well 
Well, for some people, you know, uh, that's their, that's their way of getting active on the street for the first time is, you know, like walking up on a protest. But, um, for some people it's more of an obstacle, um, like it was for me for a short time. Um, can you talk about just some of the obstacles that you've overcome, uh, through the years, how you've navigated those? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to, the most of the, you know, like a lot of obstacles that come to mind were like self-imposed obstacles and just like that inertia that I talked about and that like, you know, the feeling like probably I had way, way back that I'm just one person, what, you know, good can I do? And, you know, before I like, before I got tired of telling myself that and like, <laughs> and, 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 um, and moved on. But, um, yeah, it. I mean, the only kind of, the other thing, I mean, uh, one thing I notice about a lot of activists now that I know is that most of us are kind of introverted and um, can be like very sensitive people. That makes sense because like we're sensitive and we're aware enough to, to not close our eyes when we saw what was happening and um, we and in, let it influence us. But um, the, that can be an obstacle for a lot of people is that, that shyness and like, um, like, uh, you know, not wanting to interact with others and, you know, just like expecting like the worst out of people, you know, um, and just not thinking that things are going to come out positively by, by you going, getting out there and, and putting yourself out there to do things. Um, so that's, that can be a really big obstacle, but I, you know, I, I just feel like, I think like we, we were just talking about, I mean, when you consider the alternatives, you know, like when, uh, one quote, I think I that it was like Megan Russell. Russell said was that like she had she doesn't really know if it's any good that she what she's out there doing but that um she does know that if she doesn't do anything that she knows the outcome what that's going to do that it isn't going to make any difference so you know it's just not knowing is better is better than doing nothing um but like we said you know i mean it's it it's it's almost always like positive that's the that's the thing a lot of folks don't realize i think if if you've done a lot of like uh online engagement that can give you kind of like a the wrong idea because like people can be a lot more negative online people can be argumentative you're not there in person and like they people can say a lot of mean things to each other without knowing each other even or or anything and you know a lot of folks i think get have that in their head that if they hit the streets and um you know put themselves out there and like speak out and like share with others like the you know if for the uh for the animals or whatever issue you know you're focused on at that time that it, you're going to get that same response but it's absolutely not like that at all like when you're out there in person and like even complete strangers when you're talking to them um you it's 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 almost always positive and um you know, it's 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 really uh a huge like contrast that way between doing things online and doing things out in the street and in person. Um, and you know, once you've done it a few times, I mean, you, you realize it's not only like, it's a good thing you're doing, but it's like fun, you know? <laughs> and like for me, when I, when I'm doing an event, it is mostly, even if I'm yelling on a megaphone or something, I'm still having a good time. And like, you know, like it's frustrating. Like if you're uh, like in a campaign that takes a long time, but you know, you're, you know, you're at least making that change happen. That's eventually going to come. And, um, if you're doing outreach, even if like you have like a negative interaction, if you're positive about it, the way you approach it, you're still gonna, you're still going to have a positive influence, you know, and it's for how many of the that thousands, thousands of people that I've talked to in person, like the amount of like really negative interactions that I've had, um, I could count on one hand, you know, and I'd be like, like, with through like thanks to vegan outreach, I've been able to like introduce veganism like almost five hundred fifty thousand people at this point, and I can count that many negative instances in one hand. Um, and one of them was at your school actually, <laughs> which is funny. It's funny that we're talking about this right now. Um, there's a lot of ag kids over there that weren't too happy with uh, with us on campus all the time, but <laughs> it's so rare though. It's so rare. So, you know, that's, that's something that I think a lot of people probably holds them back is like thinking that it's going to, they're going to get a lot of hate. They're going to get a lot of people like, um, you know, fighting you, you know, like if you, if, if you're out there like at an event or if you're promoting, you know, something for the animals, like, you know, outreach, 
Um, but it does, it's not the way it works. It, it, the, the positivity and the, the, the change you see happening immediately just is like, it, is, uh, it, it gets you over that, that hump pretty quick. So that, yeah. that's probably the main one I can think. Yeah. I think that I, I, I think that's spot on because I, I just finished reading this book called, uh, liberate by Peter Young. And he talks a lot about the, uh, the cop inside of your head and how it keeps you from doing activism because you're scared. You're scared. You're going to get put on some list or scared. You're going to go to jail or something like that. And he talks about, you know, just uh, looking at it a little more realistically. And I think what you're talking about is, um, yeah, maybe, maybe just like the, uh, um, negative person inside your head that, um, you know, Oh, you might, it's not worth it. You might not make a difference. Um, or, you know, Hey, other people are doing this. What am I really going to do? I'm shy. I'm introverted, you know? And, and even if you do have like crippling anxiety, there are ways to get active for the animals. There's so many different ways. It doesn't just have to be, you know, being on the street. Um, there's, there's a bunch of different ways. And, um, and you and we were talking about the power of being out there and, um, I wanted to, I, I pulled up that quote, um, that you were, uh, talking about that you, uh, paraphrased just so we can get it. It, it was from Regan Russell. I don't know if it does any good, but I know doing nothing does no good. And it's funny that you mentioned the quote because I was, I was thinking of it as we were speaking about it too. And I think, uh, yeah, I think that says it all. Yeah, uh, it, it is powerful. Um, sometimes you just have to take that step, take that leap of faith and uh, get out there. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's just funny you mentioned uh, Peter Young, too. It's like I was saying initially, he was one of those people that I saw up on the path ahead and was like just so inspiring to see somebody else out there doing that. And, um, you know, that's look, look for those examples, you know, like those people are out there and, you know, there's, they're, they're you know, we, they're happy to actually, you know, share a lot of times you can see like talks that they've given, or like, if you go to a conference, sometimes you get to meet folks like that. Um, and it just, it'll, it'll really help inspire you to, to, to get over, you know, the, the obstacles that you feel are there, you know? Yeah, for sure. And speaking of, uh, Peter, um, you mentioned way earlier about um, how some of those uh, ALF activists were role models for you and, and you were like, well, you know, I can't even eat a veggie burger. Like, come on, these people are, you know, putting it on the line for the animals. And, you know, I, I can I can at least, you know, eat some rice and beans or, or whatever. Um, can, can you talk about that time during animal rights? Because I feel like you know, things have drastically changed since then. Like, I don't know if it's been romanticized back then or if it really was just that much of a different feeling in the air um, about animal rights. Can you just talk about that time? I, I guess it was like in the in the 90s and some in like the early 2000s um, about the, you know, the culture with these ALF like magazines, liberation magazines that were coming out and, you know, the way like information was distributed before the internet was super popular and, uh, yeah, just like how, how people viewed animal rights and animal liberation, uh, back then and, and what the activism scene was like and what, what we can learn from that going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, it certainly was different, you know? And I mean, it, in, in a lot of, a lot of ways back then, there wasn't all this information as, you know, pre-internet, especially like the, the activism that was happening for me, like a really good source that helped me a lot was like Earth First Journal. They also like shared a lot um, of ALF and uh, ELF like activity on there. Um, you know, in a way, I mean, like with how, easy it is to find information about that now is a good sign, you know, I mean, like how much has grown and everything, but it definitely was, um, it was a different a sort of approach. And, um, you know, the majority of the work that was happening was very different back then. Um, I remember, you know, speaking of like ALF it's funny, the very first action that happened, um, was in Hawaii, I believe like in like maybe like 1975, um, this may have even been 
before like the technical like ALF was invented, the the word like in from those England in England, um, from the small group over there that called it that. But it was um they basically had um these students that were in Hawaii at the I believe the University of Hawaii were became aware of like these uh psychological experiments that the school was doing on some dolphins that they held. And um you know, they thankfully they 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 put two and two together, you know, like there's these dolphins they're holding here doing this bullshit, um, you know, causing all this psychological trauma to these, you know, innocent animals and like they put that together with like, oh look, the ocean is right over there, you know. <laughs> and they one night they 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 loaded the dolphins up it, uh, and um and and liberated them right out of the their truck into the water you know and so you know back then it you know there were before uh, the, you know it, it was like people were learning about it but i think a lot of times it was just like a natural reaction to like the issue that they saw right in front of them you know it um i would you know a lot of a lot of people that were starting doing vegan outreach back then, like doing tabling events and uh, speaking or, you know, leafleting started, I guess, like in probably in the 80s in the, you know, at some point. But a lot of them were people that came from the industry itself, um, you know, and they were either raised as children in animal ag and they had, you know, attended uh, Future Farmers of America or, or something and just they, they didn't sit well with them. And like once they started getting older and thinking for themselves, they they decided they were going to actually act, act on that. Um, and that's the way I felt too. I mean, like I, I didn't, we didn't talk about it at all yet, but like when I was going through that environmental phase, like too, like conservation was like something I believed it would, like I, I could take part in before I went vegan. And at, for a time I actually worked as a zookeeper and like a, f a few in zoos, like institutions, like until I, you know, learned pretty quickly that like, okay, you know, it, it, the, the conservation you see on the billboard out there, like, it's not the real deal, you know, <laughs> it's not what these guys are doing. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's kind of, it, it kind of just, I was looking at like the uh, different animals they had on the exhibit. And then like, they have a lot of animals that they keep behind the scenes, which are like in much worse conditions than the ones that the public sees. And, um, you know, it just, same thing just in my mind it's just like how hard would it be you know <laughs> and um i think that's what a lot of people were doing back then they really just like they there wasn't really like a lot of uh this was before like um you know animal activism became like a national issue for like the authorities you know like uh animal enterprise act you know like that happened in the in the 90s and um now like with you know law later on like you know, a lot of uh, these people, like the liberators, especially, got a lot of focus on them for that, and so that 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 is what led, I think, to a bigger change in in like how the activism transformed from back then into what it is now was under that influence and having to respond to that and find a way to continue to make work happen, which is like it's pretty regular how that happens. I mean, um, a lot of you know. A lot of times, like, the police will, like, try and tell you you can't do something at an event. Um, you can't, you know, you can't use the megaphones. You can't, you know, like, do this or that. And it's almost every time that I've seen it that, like, when the authorities try to, like, stop what you're doing, the thing that you come up with to answer to that is almost more effective, like, half the time than what you were doing at first. So... You know, it's 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 funny now because like all that pressure from the industry and like getting the you know like federal people to like focus on that, it it rubbed the wrong way with a lot of people and a lot of people like were like oh what what's going on there why is why are animal activists being called terrorists you know like what what kind of dumb crap is that? <laughs> and you know I think that did like actually like promote the work that was happening a lot more that way too. And like, thanks to the internet, it's like on fire now and you can't put it out, you know? So yeah, it, it definitely, it was different back then, but some of those actions like way early on, way, like reading about them and the journals and things like you would uh, get and like bite back magazine um, with, from the ALF would, uh, it just, it just like was so inspiring to me. I mean, like I, I just, if people are out there like risking that much, like I'm damn sure going to do it what whatever i can to to be a part of that you know yeah yeah definitely 
Yeah, I, man, that must have that must have been a heck of a time I, back then. <laughs> like I, I really enjoy uh, reading stuff uh, and watching videos about that time and animal rights, and I'm trying to learn from it as much as I can. I, and I do think that we've had. Um, some of that has happened with, especially like with the recent fur victories, uh, you know, some of that kind of activism from, you know, that time period is, is resurfacing and is so effective. And I'm sorry that the animal rights movement ever got away from it. Um, I'm not saying it's the only type of activism, but it, you know, I mean, it's definitely one that, that needs to, that needs to be here. Um, you'd like a lot of things. I don't think it's actually gone away. I think it's actually just like moved. You know, it's um, we just keeping up with events. I mean, I, I see that there's still a lot of like direct kind of actions in those forms, like in Europe and in Mexico and um, like all the time, like the um, the fur industry in uh, Scandinavia right now is getting pounded right now. Like just like with events like every other week or every week, maybe, you know, <laughs> just like over and over. So it, I don't think it's gone away. You know, maybe it has been forced underground. And that's, that's, you know, that's the way it needs to be for like some, you know, some issues that we're working on, but, um, I don't think it's gone away necessarily. Yeah. I think like, it's just like, not as, uh, it's, it's not as open as it once was anyway. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about, um, pressure campaigns and like, are there any right now that you're really excited about i know um we were recently together uh participating in the pressure campaign against uh saint laurent in chicago and you know uh that that was really um really inspiring they they haven't gone for free yet but i think that they will just talk about any pressure campaigns that you're um excited about right now yeah it's um it's, it was really great recently taking part in that um it it, it really uh the, you know, like we've been talking about being out there in the street and like pressuring these companies at, on their doorstep is, uh, is really important. You know, like it, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's much different than what I've been used to I, initially with Greenpeace and things like we did a lot of that, um, back in the day, like pressuring, uh, companies to, you know, like adopt like a renewable energy or like fuel, uh, more fuel efficiency. Like we used to like blockade it, like it business entrances like regularly to like to get the news and do things like that um and you know it's it's good to see right now this this is so much happening with um all the other recent victories that we've had especially in the fur industry because with uh covid especially like a lot of activism also became very difficult to pull off and um especially i mean what my focus was was uh in doing person to person public outreach it uh it really threw a wrench into that for a little while so the being able to take part in these pressure campaigns now has been like just like such a breath of fresh air for me and to be able to like um to uh team up with so many people in this community here in chicago that are doing that and um i wouldn't have met uh, quite a few local activists if it hadn't been for taking part in that but um yeah, it, you know, it, the pressure, I think, is coming from different directions. It's not just like us out on the street doing that. I think like the industry itself, all the challenges they're having, um, public, you know, uh, the view of like fur is like is is not is very favorable at all. Like really, they've only been able to continue what they're doing by like hiding it in like trim on on, on clothing and um, mislabeling it. To be honest, like a lot of uh, fur things that people buy in stores it has been like investigations have found like a majority of it is actually mislabeled as far as what animal it is and um, where it's come from. Um, a lot of the governments are trying to pass things just sort of the way to like the meat industry did where they don't have to label where it came from, you know, and um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it and for for people that think, you know, that, I mean, you know, in here in this country, there's such like a high priority put on freedom. You know, when people learn about things like that, I think it backfires. I think it makes people more curious about it and want to learn, you know? Um, and at least I did, you know, for me, it worked that way too. I remember the, the did you see the movie Food Inc. a, a long ways back? I did. Yeah. Before I was vegan, I, I saw that movie. Yeah. And that one, and then all the newer ones too, where that has the focus of like kind of investigative journalism and like the interviews, like in, um, in Cowspiracy and um, What the Health and, you know, those movies as well. It really like 
it shows you that there's a lot of like hiding going on, you know, they're really like trying hard to keep oh, yeah. people from knowing the truth. And that really, I think that's one of the powerful influences, those kind of, you know, a lot of the movies now that are out that can have. Um, and, you know, the fur industry has, has been able to try different things, but it, it's, uh, it's, it's very close to going out. You know, we, it's international where we're, where we're working on this. So that's one thing that I find inspiring too, is like without really doing it that way, I don't think that we can have like a, such a big influence as we can, um, in, uh, you know, in a campaign like this. So the fact that like that, that why cells are getting hit, not just in other countries, but in like other continents and everything is really like powerful. And, um, even them being like a, a little obstinate at the moment and not, you know, like giving any kind of like uh, feedback on like our, all of our work. Um, it's days are numbered, you know, and and um, after they go, it's going to be the next one and it's going to be the next one until like it's it's not there anymore. And that's the way these things work, you know. Um, so that taking part in this recently with the, with the other Chicago activists and you you and your team uh, the AAM crew and you came up here was um, we really like saying it was like a breath of fresh air for me was like that's like an understatement it was like just like a like a gust <laughs> yeah it was amazing too just to meet everybody and I feel like I feel like my community just doubled when we, when I came up there, um, you know, like I just met so many amazing people and got to reconnect with you. And I feel like we all just became more on the same page and man, uh, just, just amazing. So Yuri, you've been an activist for a long time. You've been with vegan outreach for a long time. You've been all over the country, uh, doing activism. You used to be a zookeeper until you, you know, like, had that epiphany about the animals and just kind of saw what was going on behind the scenes. You've been through a lot. So just what are some of the experiences that stick out to you um, throughout your time of b being an activist, whether it be, you know, something that made you sad or something that gave you an epiphany or something that inspired you or, or surprised you or shocked you. Can you just talk about maybe like one or two experiences that, um, you know, really stick out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thankfully, you know, in, in finding my, the, the path to becoming, you know, being able to become active, not just, um, as a volunteer weekly, um, with vegan outreach, like it's like back in 2010, I think, or something like that. I was doing weekly events in Florida to like being able to do like, uh, you know, full-time, you know, working and, and, helping to wake people up daily, you know, that way it's, um, there's so many, there's so many moments and memories. Um, it's the, I mean, it, I guess for me, like one, one thing that really like was, uh, if anything I could call like an epiphany was like realizing that my, um, my path to becoming vegan and to becoming an activist wasn't something that was like, to be ashamed of like how long it took me and like the path the missteps that I took and all that but it actually was a strength because like knowing how challenging this like uh specifically to become vegan you know could be for some people I suddenly realized that like I'm speaking from a lot of experience you know and um that has helped me a lot that has helped me like more than anything the um you know the realization that the, the people you're either leafleting to or they're coming up to a table. Um, mostly with vegan outreach, I did leafleting a lot of years, but in the last couple of years, I was able to do uh, virtual reality events with um, with uh, our partner at the for that was uh, Animal Equality. We we were using footage that they had they had gathered of like pig farming, chicken farming, and uh, the dairy industry, and we're showing that to students. And um, it it really knowing how tough it can be but at the same time knowing that like if somebody was stopping to talk to you or if somebody was walking up to your table that on some level there's a reason they did that they're coming up they they, they you know it, it might be like an ag student and it might be a um you know uh some somebody uh, like most of my 
a lot of my touring was like in the deep south and like Texas and, and, and across there. So like talking to students that were like hunters and different things was like a regular thing. But having that approach that like trusting in that there's a part of them that is curious about this, that wants to know, like no matter what words is coming out of their mouth, um, that that there there's a reason that they brought themselves to to, you know, introduce themselves to you or to come up and ask some questions. <clears throat> and just kind of going with that belief, it opened up so many doors, I think, in like being able to talk to people and being able to relate to people and share um, what I knew that would help them in like, you know, in, in the, the challenges they might be having and understanding, you know, why this is important or why, you know, the, uh, why they should care about it. You know, like people, it, it, you, you hear a lot that there's like a scale of one to a hundred of people becoming vegan. Some people take the huge step and like do like 99, a hundred percent, you know, like almost immediately other people learn it like five, 10, 15 steps at a time. And so approaching people with that positivity and that belief in them um, can get them to jump a lot quicker and, and move forward quicker because it's like you're talking to them as a friend in a way. And um, it was one of uh, the folks that was on the road with me before um, before Yuki, uh, Carlos uh, Yan is an activist from Miami who like shared his, uh, his experiences of like traveling on the road and doing the virtual reality tour, the first one we did. He was, he's, the way he said it was that people need allies you know, the people that want to change, but they don't have that path. That's what they need. And that kind of really like was a, was a powerful realization to me, like how, how important that is. And, um, there's, so there's been so many, like just amazing, like transformations I've able to see, like, just like taking that approach uh, one, like that I still, I can't get out of my head. Like is, is like, is always like a good memory to me was actually a hunter from, um, University of New Hampshire, I believe, or no, 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 University of Vermont, my bad. Um, so it was way up there, way up north for the, for the VR. We did a lot of schools up that way too. Um, and he came up, he was very challenged. Um, you know, he, the, the, the VR, it's a very like enticing thing too. So a lot of students want to try it just because of the tech, you know, and even know, knowing what the purpose is. So he was, he was there and he, he watched um, the dairy video, I believe. And he, I, you know, I think, like I said, like knowing that I wasn't like being antagonistic, that I actually was like very open and like um, being like very honest with him in not a challenging way, but just being very direct. <clears throat> he had all these questions and he had all these things and we had like a kind of like a five, 10 minute discussion. And um, it, it, putting myself in his shoes, I just was kind of like, you know, what it is it, you know, what is it about hunting that, you know, you, you enjoy? I mean, is it, it you know, it, I couldn't imagine myself that it was killing animals is like, is, is it because you enjoy being in, in the outdoors? Is it because you, you love nature? And that really resonated with him. He was like, you know, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I love. And, um, I just, you know, I told him, I mean, like if you support factory farming, you know, you're, you're actively destroying what you love, you know, you're actively destroying what you're, you know, what is meaningful to you. And, um, they, it really, it really struck him like, you know, that, that somebody was speaking to him like that much, you know, that directly and with like care like that. So even if you're having like somebody that's like challenging or something, just trust that there's a reason why, you know, this interaction is happening and, you know, give, give them, give them your, you know, the best chance that you can. Um, that's, that's what they need. They need allies. They need, they need friends. And, um, that's what we have to be for, for, uh, for, for them so that that to me that, that that kind of was like the biggest probably like realization is like in the focusing in the at least in the outreach different events you're doing it's um it can be hard and challenging to relate to people like that when you're protesting and they're yelling at you like uh your shoes are leather or whatever <laughs> but um when you're when you're there in front of a person like even if it is at a protest and somebody's coming up and it like wants to talk to you about what's going on you know just um be kind to them they don't know what you know, and you didn't know what you know either at some point. So, you know, you, you just need to be, uh, be open and to be, to give everybody the best chance that, that they can have. Um, they thanks, you know, like I said, so they, thankfully my background and like all those missteps and everything, it kind of taught me that like, 
maybe if I had had somebody like that, that would like, you know, was like had a helping hand, like, it would have happened a little quicker, but now I can be that for somebody else. So, you know, like you can't pay it back, but I'm definitely going to pay it forward. And that's what we all, that's, you know, we need more people doing that. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's a powerful story and a powerful takeaway. You know, everybody deserves a chance to change. Everybody deserves a chance to learn the truth and do what they're going to do with it. You know, um, so you talked, you talked about throughout your journey, um, you had some, uh, what you called missteps. Um, can you just talk about something you've changed about your activism over the years as you've learned? I know for me, I feel like I'm changing my activism all the time. I'm, I'm constantly trying to reflect and figure out, you know, what's the most effective activism that I can do. Um, so I would just love to know, you know, some things that you've changed over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it, it probably comes back to what you just said, you know, about what it means to be effective. Right. When, um, when I was first doing a lot of environmental things I was doing, it was just kind of like, it was just an impulse and, you know, just like I had to like take action and do what I could, but it took me quite a few years to sort of um, take a step back and like actually be honest with myself and like how effective what I was doing, how effective it really was. And like, you know, be learning to, um, to count the, you know, to count your effectiveness by the results you're having. That's something I didn't know originally. You know, I used to just, uh, it was just fun to protest and, you know, like, if the cops were called, that just meant it was like a more successful event. <laughs> you know, it just was like an exciting thing, but I wasn't paying attention to that. Like most of the, the, the first years that I was doing activism. So that's probably like the most important thing that, that I feel like I, that I've, that I've changed over the years. And like, thankfully, uh, you know, learn to apply it is, um, is being able to, to like, look at the results and like choose the things to do that are going to maximize what I can do as just one person or with a team of other people. If you're, if you're, um, organizing with your friends, um, you know, just always keep in mind that, that factor, you know, and, and use that to, to like inform, you know, like the choices you're making. That's something I think like, um, we all, it takes it, it, activists, uh, don't always, you know, know that right away. You know, I didn't, and um, so that it's it's something that you can, in a way it's almost like maturing as an activist in a way it is like becoming like a little more like uh, comfortable in what you're doing so that you can analyze it and then um, and then these things become a little more clear so that's that's probably the most powerful thing that I've changed about the way I approach things and um, it, it thank you know thankfully it was around that time that like I did approach vegan outreach and begin to volunteer with them because what I saw that they were doing was, um, exactly what I needed that way. It, um, it, I, I really hadn't thought that, uh, you know, I thought like doing uh protesting corporations, uh, you know, was effective, but really for those corporations to change, like we need people to boycott them and boycott them heavy, you know? And that's something that like every time you're out there, like, um, doing outreach and, and getting people to become vegan and join that, you know, to join us in boycotting and by the, by the numbers is growing and growing and growing. And that's how, you know, things are going to change because they aren't going to be able to keep in business anymore. And so I feel like that's pretty effective, you know, and it, that's, that's, that's a, that's a result we're seeing like all these, like, uh, you know, the, is it, over the years, how many more like vegan foods that are available, how many like companies we see coming in and like uh, even big, like, you know, ag companies like, oh, well, we're going to do a veggie burger too. You know, <laughs> and you, you don't, you, that's not happening without like some type of leverage being felt on their part that they have to, they have to change. So um, it, it's, it's definitely like, it's, it feels really great to be like a small part in that and like, you know, getting others and like working alongside others that, uh, that are doing the same thing. So, um, it, a lot of people are like paying attention to results now. And like, it is a way that we're kind of becoming smarter as a movement. And I think as, as activists, you know, um, it, uh, it just keeps improving and improving 
you know, the more we pay attention and the more we, uh, we stay, we, we focus. Yeah. I think, I think paying attention and focusing and reflecting is, is so important. Um, so, uh, you talked about that maturity, um, you know, and it, it took you a while to get there. Uh, and I feel like I'm still getting there. I still don't, I still don't feel like a, a mature activist yet. And, and I hope to get there, but, um, so with that, I want to ask the last question. You ready for this? <laughs> uh, if you were in a room full of brand new activists right now, what advice would you give them? Ooh, wow. Um, that's a good one. You know, it, it I mean, in a way it's kind of, it's a little bit, we had talked about this, like a little bit of, as far as like paying attention and like really like analyzing yourself honestly and what you're doing. But, um, it, it, there's, there's actually, you know, there might be like a, a small handful of things I would mention, and that would definitely be one of them. That's something I feel like everybody needs to hear. Um, the, the other thing is like the, the idea that like what we're doing is, um, is, isn't going to be something that's going to be fixed within a year or something like that. So you need to look at this. Like it's a, it's, it's definitely you've, like the phrase you've heard, like, um, it's, it's, it's not a sprint. This is a marathon and you got to look at it like a marathon and, um, you know, kind of a, kind of approach it that way because it is something that we need to work on and we need to, to work on with like our full energy and our full, like, uh, you know, health and everything like that, that we can bring to it for a, t for a long time. So that's something that I definitely also didn't know initially. And I think is important for like newer activists to sort of, um, to hear because it, you know, you activism burnout is a real deal. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's happened to a lot of people. I know it's happened to me. Um, you know, not pacing yourself, not, not being very intentional about taking breaks when, you know, you, you need to, um, and you trying, you know, being very intentional too, about maintaining positivity, you know, you're, you're, you're a positive influence in this world, like more than that a lot of us know. And, um, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's huge, you know? So instead of focusing all the time on like, um, the problem and like, the the uh, doom and gloom that we all feel and know and that's influenced you know us in our actions if we focus on that it, too much we're gonna it's gonna take a toll on us too so you really we need to be intentional too about like taking downtime and like you know doing goofy stuff with friends um you know whatever it is you know you really gotta you really gotta like make that a priority as much as anything else um it it's important, you know, because like, um, we're, we're very rare, you know I mean? <laughs> like activists, vegans themselves are very rare. There's like, you know, the number now it's like one in a hundred, anywhere to do you know, one to six out of a hundred, depending on different things you, you come across as far as how many vegans are in the, you know, are growing, but out of those vegans, how many of them are activists, right? Another one out of a hundred. So like, if you're in, if you're listening to this and you're, you know, you're, you're, this is, you're finding your path into doing this, you are freaking rare, you know, and you're, you're important. And, um, you know, you need to like, uh, apply that into what you're doing. I mean, it, we're really, we cannot keep doing, uh, things that cause us to burn out and to like keeping focused on the negativity and everything. We really have to like, uh, make, find our way to be positive and to like, um, to keep learning and, uh, be, be, be good to ourselves. So that's, that's probably, I guess that would be, what is that about three things, I guess <laughs> that's, that, those are, that's the most important ones. I think, I mean, really like if I had known that early on, it would have probably really helped me uh, avoid some, you know, avoid some, uh, spaces where I was really worn out and not sure how I could, you know, continue and, and everything. And, um, thankfully now that like applying those things, it's, it, I realize it does help a lot, but we're, we're important, you know, people need to, 
take care of themselves and as much as like they're taking care of others and um doing our best for the animals we need to take care of ourselves too like that it's just like we're rare you know yeah and i think we need to take care of each other too the community's so so important and i'm i'm so glad i have that with you and and other people and i i would stress the importance of that as well yuri you're a wealth of knowledge my friend you're inspiring i am so appreciative that you took the time to be here uh as our very first guest uh on the show so thanks so so much for all you do thanks for the personal impact you've had in my life and my activism and i know that i'm not the only one so i'm sure that many are listening to this and um have a similar story as me uh with you know their interactions with you and uh, i just appreciate everything you do man thanks again oh thank you this this was such an honor i'm like i'm like uh so stoked that we had this opportunity and um that you put this together. So thank you. I, if, I, uh, if you're, you're really like one of the best examples, I mean, of like everything that we're working towards and like working together and like that, you know, we're doing, we're doing it right, you know? So like, thank you for this opportunity and all the work that, uh, that you've done the last few years too. It, uh, it's, it's inspiring to me as well. So thank you, Trey. That means a lot coming from you, my friend until next time. Wow, Yuri is just incredible. Uh, I'm so appreciative that he joined us here on the podcast and we are honored that he was our very first guest. Thank you all so much for being here and for listening. Please rate and review the podcast wherever you listen. It helps others find it more easily and the more people that find it, the more people can be inspired by the guests interviewed on our show like Yuri and we can turn that into actionable change for animals. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Animal Activism Mentorship. You can keep up with the podcast as well as everything AAM. One more reminder that you can sign up for a free mentor to help you with your activism at AnimalActivismMentorship.com. If you needed a sign that you should be an activist for animals, this is it. Remember that it will take all of us to achieve animal liberation. Stay focused, stay positive, be effective, and keep doing your part. Until next time.